we all have them. The wallflowers, the drop and dash, the BSA stands for Babysitters of America, right? You know what I'm talking about. The adult, I don't volunteer. The real question is, is how do we find a spot for them and entice them to want to join? That's what we're talking about today. But before we dive into that and I give you three ways to get those adults to volunteer, and number three will surprise you. Let's talk about today's camp gear. Today's camp gear, I probably should have done a long time ago. That's the sleeping bag. Man, the sleeping bag. Your little home away from home, that bed that I just really, really miss when it's 20 degrees outside. But let's talk about it. Your sleeping bag has an R value, and that is the value of insulation, the temperature on how low it can go. Now, the sleeping bag will say 40 degrees, but in reality, it's only gonna do 50. Now, you can get your sleeping bag from pretty much anywhere, but I recommend you get them from reputable outdoor dealers. Academy, REI, maybe you got a local outfitter that you really like to use. But stick with a name brand because that zipper needs to last and it's going to get worn out. I bought my first one pretty cheap, 20 bucks, and I regretted it. The zipper blew out within three campouts. You're gonna need to think of two things when it comes to your sleeping bag. Number one, do I want a mummy bag or do I want a square bag? Now that mummy bag is gonna give you a lot of comfort and really keep you warm on those cold nights. And most mummy bags will actually get a colder R value than the square ones. But the problem is, is down by your feet in the foot box, it's gonna get tight. And in the middle of the night, you're gonna get uncomfortable. You may not even be able to move in the middle of the night. But that square bag, where it is a little bit bigger is going to be way more comfortable for you in the middle of the night. Now let's discuss how we're gonna store our bag. Now, from home to the campsite, it's gonna be one of two ways. You're either gonna roll it up or it's gonna, you're gonna stuff it in the stuff sack that it came with. But at home, you want to let it breathe. Say it again, let it breathe. The insulation inside is not meant to be packed for very long. So I like to just let mine sit inside a really big Tupperware container so that it can have the chance to fluff out. Now if you've got the room, hang it up or lay it out flat so that it can repuff itself up. But you gotta do that, otherwise that thing will get packed and it won't have any insulation at all. So like I said in the beginning, we all have those adult volunteers. Heck, we were all pre-volunteer at one point in time. Some of us were eagles, and as soon as our kids were born, we started dreaming about the day we were going to be adult volunteers. But for some of us, like myself, who were never in the scout program to start off with, we had no idea. So we didn't even know that there were zero qualifications to be an adult volunteer. Someone had to come to you and say, hey, do you wanna help out? At first I was like, no, I, I, I'm good. But a year later, uh, yeah, yeah, I would like to help out. So your adult volunteer may be sitting on the sidelines going, hmm, I wonder how I can help. And they may not know any areas that where help is needed. So I'm gonna lay out three ways for you to get those adults to want to volunteer. Number one, it never hurts to ask. Worst case scenario is they say, no, I'm good, right? What will that cost you? Five minutes of your time? Don't be afraid to approach your adults. Now, it is a really good idea to approach them two at a time. And my recommendation, the committee chair and the unit leader. Throw a scenario out for you. 
me and my committee chair notice an adult showing up and he's there every day let's go talk to him and see if there's any way he would like to help out in a more official role you go visit that scout and then they say you know i would like to go camping with the with the scouts great let's get you an adult application in our unit we entice them to want to join by saying and the unit pays for your registration that person joins in the next thing you know five years down the road they're a scoutmaster and all it was was hey would you like to help out worst they could have said was no i'm good the other thing is you need to know what you're asking don't ask them hey do you want to volunteer ask them hey can you help us fill a void so now you're telling them that we get this empty spot and we really could use your help so they start feeling appreciated they're like hey they really need me let me join in let me help that really makes them feel appreciated that we want them in the program well i mean we do but we need to let them know that Number two, do not overcomplicate the task. Now I'll say that again, do not overcomplicate the task. Don't ask your brand new adult leader to chair a brand new event. That's just a disaster waiting to happen. And all you wood badge people, that's not a plan with a bias for action. So, Ask them to fill a position that's been filled before. Pinewood Derby, Rocket Day, something where it's been outlined. All they have to do is follow the outline and they'll have success. Key three positions really should be for two year experience scouters. Throw them in and immediately they get overwhelmed with maintaining the unit, keeping the unit going or keeping a budget. That could get really daunting very fast. I mean, most of us can attest to it's not just one hour a week. But planning a blue and gold? Absolutely. Something that's already been done, that has already been planned, and that already has an outline. So all they have to do is follow. Step three, parent talent survey. I mentioned it before in the saving a small unit. And that video did very well, by the way, but I didn't really go into how we can use that parent talent survey to find a place for these adult volunteers. I am a mechanic by trade. That's what I do for a living. And as an adult volunteer, I really don't see how that can translate into an outdoor program. So if I'm sitting on the sidelines and I'm just bringing my son in I don't know that yes there is a place for me I could be a merit badge counselor zero commitment I just have to be there if the scouts need me and I can sign up for the automotive merit badge the farm equipment merit badge because they're kind of similar I could sign up for the electrical merit badge automotive uses, uses electrical but Without that parent talent survey, I wouldn't know that one of my parents is a mechanic and we can use his skills in that area. Maybe you have an adult that's former military and they have a lot of outdoor experience. Maybe they can help out as an assistant scout master. Hey, when you get back out in the woods, they can be really good at keeping things organized. So a committee chair position could help them out. Now, I wouldn't advise letting a first year adult volunteer be a committee chair, but maybe putting them on the committee, let, a, let them get used to it. Say, hey, you don't have to do anything. Just show up once a month for our committee meeting and be a voice. And pretty soon they'll start seeing that their input is valued and that they do have something they can offer this program. So look, it doesn't matter if our adults are sitting on the sidelines or dropping their kids off and dashing away. 
it would never hurt to ask them. So the bottom line is they probably want to help, but they don't know where or how. And where we come in is finding a place for them, guide them, mentor them, and who knows, in five years, they could be running the program. But it all starts with, hey, can I ask you a question? So, for some dad jokes, I love the smell of bananas. It's very appealing. What did the horse say after he tripped and fell? Help, I can't giddy up. So, for my Scoutmaster Cubmaster Minute. In my hand, I have a set of keys. And with these keys, I can get in my vehicle. I can start it. And I can travel to faraway places. Had a lot of adventures with this key. I've pulled the scout trailer. I've gone on family vacations. I've seen a lot of things. But with this book, I can unlock a world of possibilities. I can become a new person. I can change history. I can learn a new skill, develop a new hobby. But all it takes is opening the pages and reading the book. So just as the key is important, and without it, I might be able to get the job done, but it's going to take a long time. With this book, my path to a brighter future is much easier. And that is my Scoutmaster Minute. I love it. So guys, be sure to like and follow. And if you're brand new here, subscribe so that you don't miss a future episode and help me break the algorithm and get the scouting program in front of everyone that watches YouTube. And as always, go out, have fun, and don't forget to scout on purpose.